Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on the show this week... Doddy and I went to the bespoke handmade bike show in Bristol to check out lots of bits and pieces from the smaller parts to the full bikes. Yeah, and we've got some really, really good entries for Bike Cave, Top Mods and Rewind. Okay, jumping straight into the news, like Henry just said, we went over to the Bespoke Show over in Bristol, so it's kind of a UK version of the Handmade Bike Show. Um, what you got for us first, Henry? So first of all is the sequenced downhill bike. Engineer Vladimir, based over in the Midlands, basically, pretty much from the ground up, designed and made his own downhill bike. It's a carbon fiber um, beast, and it's pretty incredible. He really- it's Work of art, this thing, isn't it? Yeah, he really focused on you know, kind of the whole design ethos. And what was really interesting to speak to him is his views on views on kind of the industry and how we make bikes. One of the suggestions he had was actually that all bike manufacturers, much like they do with kind of high performance cars, should spec like, you know, chassis, chassis twist and at what, how much it twists at what torque. That's interesting, yeah. Because when things are 15% stiffer, what does that actually mean? And when we translate yeah. that to our actual bikes. So yeah, really interesting guy, really interesting understanding. And that bike is a medium, which is 440 mil reach which is actually probably about right for a medium. And yeah. Yeah, looks really, really, really smart. It's, it's pretty staggering really, isn't it? The finish on it, I've got to say, is absolutely beautiful. Mm. It's similar to the Uno and that has the cables going into the top tube. Do you know it shares a few similarities, I thought, and a few yeah. people said that with the Uno. Yeah, yeah. But both really well thought out bikes and yeah, no, they look absolutely great. And it's funny because at the UK bike show, seeing something like that that's a handmade and then the other end of the spectrum, um, I'm throwing you to this Curtis Thumper Cross that you can see on screen now. So it is, this is a British made, in fact, made in Somerset, very close to our offices, made out of T45 steel and it's fillet braised. This one's a single pivot and it belongs to British racer Jim Davidge. It's got 63 degree head angle up front, usual sort of downhill stuff you'd expect to see. Um, of course, it's very different for downhill bikes being made out of steel like this. And uh, if you've ever seen or heard about Jim Davidge, it's probably a good deal that he is riding a steel frame. Uh, the original one back in the day, probably 2004, I think, was based on a Rissi Racing rear end, so single pivot linkage activated. And it used to have a carbon front end. They basically took that carbon, which is off an Elan, I think, really, really heavy. Bin that off, basically. <laughs> a bit of steel one instead, but uh, um, it's come on leaps and bounds since then, I've got to say. So, Beautiful, beautiful yes. piece of kit. And don't forget Curtis's kid's bike as well. Oh, yeah. Which is for another pretty special bit of kit, eh? Yeah, I, I, the staggering. I, if I ever get a kid, I'll probably have to get one of those. If I just acquire a kid. Yeah. Um, sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? But never mind. Okay, um, also from uh, from Froome, in fact, the Bicycle Academy. Now, this is a, uh, bear in mind that this is a bespoke handmade bike show, so it's quite a hipster sort of show. This is about the most hipster thing we saw. Yeah. And this is the bike jig you can buy in order to build your hipster bikes on. Um, but jokes aside, this is this really is a work of art. This thing is absolutely stunning. Made from steel and brass, and just look at the details on this thing. I've never seen a piece of kit that looks this good. No, and what I love about it is that it's almost about opening the industry up in the way you manufacture bikes. Yeah. Instead of, certainly with you know carbon fiber, it's all, it's quite secretive, you know, as, as you were yeah. saying with, yeah. um, with Ibis last week. Yeah, they want to you share know, They want to share, and I, I love yeah. that sort of thing. I think we're going to get, it's only going to help. Well, the Bicycle know? Academy are fantastic at that, there's a hell of a lot of UK bike manufacturers that have come out of there, that have basically gone back to school with the Academy and learned how to do that. And that's actually something you can do at home. You can go on courses, learn to build your own frame, you build a project bike for Africa, and then you actually get to build your own bike off the back of it. It's a fantastic I system. Say, but, um, if I built a bike, I wouldn't, I'd feel too bad if I made someone else ride it. Oh, really? just, well, I wouldn't trust my own welding, eh? It would yeah. just be, it would just be like lumps of oh, rabbit droppings on the hedge. Do you know what? <laughs> Andrew Denham and all those guys at the Bike Academy, seriously, like, I think they could teach most people that are fairly savvy at building a bike. Um, yeah, they'd, have, they'd have their work but, cut out. <laughs> but this jig, if you want to buy the jig, four grand plus that, which sounds like a lot of money, but if you actually saw the quality, you're a uh, quid yeah. in, I think. Yeah. Um, also, um, we saw that Arbor Seca. So it's actually we've seen one of these bikes before. This is the high pivot enduro bike, uh, carbon made in West Sussex in the UK, 160 mil travel. Um, very nice, but we've already seen it, but tucked away behind it was the new bike. And this is a Proto. Uh, currently it's unnamed. He's just calling it the R2B Proto. Slightly shorter travel, about 150 mil. And instead of having a high pivot, it's got a slightly lower pivot, so it doesn't need the idler wheel. And the theory is it's a bit better for all day riding. Yeah, and it looks, I love how it, from the from head to toe, it all looks like one, like the same bike, you know, a real design ethos has gone through. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And the numbers, 485 for a large yep. and reach. Yeah, and, and currently in a one size as well. Yes. <laughs> of course, yeah. And 
78 degree seat angle, which I yes. think is great. Great for climbing. Yeah, 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 so good. It's funny when people see a large bike, a large or an extra large, and they mm. say, why have you slammed the saddle forward? You know, don't you want your bike to fit? But it's actually two different Yeah, it's issues, not about you know? that. Yeah, it's yeah. not about that. Yeah, it's getting that it's position getting sorted, right. Yeah. Um, so the linkage design is quite interesting, actually. So it, it's kind of similar to the Arbor, except on the Arbor, with the hype of it there, it basically pierced the seat tube in order for it to work. But now it actually goes under the bottom bracket shell. Uh, in this shot, you can see it, and it's got like a carbon fairing to keep it protected from harm. Um, you might see one of these, a production one, later this year, apparently. Very cool looking bike. So, yeah. Then you've got the Starling Spur with the Effa Gear gearbox, which is actually a French gearbox. So, like with Pinion, you know, Continental Brands stepping up and offering potentially a solution away from the derailleur, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so the Starling bikes, so it's a very similar platform, in fact, to his previous models, just with that gearbox on it. But I, I really like this because apparently the Effa Gear one has barely any friction when you ride it. Of course, they're always going to have an element of that, but once you've done quite a few miles on it, Apparently they're really, really free flowing. Uh, it's also got a rear hub in it. It's got a magnetic clutch system on it, so it's almost silent. So the whole bike, you can imagine with the gearbox, almost silent on the trail. Yeah, and, and I think Joe was saying actually that uh, you can you just hear the oil going through the shims on the shop. <laughs> that's about the most noise that you get out of the bike. No. That's pretty cool. Just a dental squelching as you yeah. as you cruise down the trail. Yeah. Perfect. And they also had this as well, which is, uh, what do they call it, the Flyer. Um, basically a pub bike, from what I can work out, but it's a bit of a nod to the old Flovel Flyer BMX race bikes from back in the day, isn't it? But it paints a nice picture, oh, cruising man. down a canal path, weaving on the way home. You know? I think you probably would be weaving with that head angle, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> We've also got what is actually, I mean, in terms of the work, the craftsmanship on it, the sturdy cycles, Hardtail. Yeah. I just couldn't take my eyes off of that seat tube junction. I, it was so neat. For me, that was the best looking bike at the show. Yeah. And it just subtly just sat there on the back of the Bicycle Academy stand and so yeah. many people were walking past it. It just looked So incredible. it's got additive yeah. manufactured titanium lugs on it, kind of like we've seen with the robot bikes and the Atherton bikes, but instead of tubes being bonded, it's actually hand welded, uh, which with titanium, it's actually quite a hard process to do. And it, just look how neat it is, it's absolutely beautiful. No, it's and a thing like you were saying, that that particular uh, junction at the top of the seat tube there, you've got the bolt on the left-hand side just hidden away there, so there's no clamp on the top, no. nothing nasty to see. And I also quite like the fact that with the additive manufacturing, you get quite a unique look to those lugs, yes, yes, and he's yes. left it raw mm. and had the tubing being almost polished compared to it. No, it looked oh. fantastic. There was also on display the Ingrid Italian 12-speed transmission. Ah, yeah. Which did look really cool. The cassette was looked so intricate. That, that was that detail. bonkers lightweight cassette, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So about the, 50 grams lighter than an Eagle and yeah, you know, and it the was, top spec one. Yeah, beautifully machined. It's funny. The derailleur almost looked like a hybrid between a SRAM and a Shimano. I think, objectively speaking, the shifter isn't quite as well refined, perhaps, Lee, but I guess it's not a manufacturer yet. Anything Some could, could say it looks a bit clumpy. Clumpy. Well, actually... It's it a prototype, to be fair. Yeah, it is a prototype. You could, say it's, <laughs> you could say it was good from afar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's time for Bike Cave. You know the drill. This is where we get to check out where you keep your bikes, where you work on your bikes, where you tuck them up in bed at night, um, maybe you fix a puncture and you get sealant all over the walls. Um, if you've got a real cool place you work on your bike or any of the above, um, take some pictures of it. Tell us all about it. It could just be the back of a rusty old van. Literally anything counts. We love to see what you guys have at home. So take some photos. The uploaded link is on the screen there and get them in. We'll put you on the show. Um, so, right, so this is uh, probably the first proper one you'll have been doing with us, yes. Henry. Yeah. So let's, let's double up on this. So the cool. first start this week is from Gerardo in Santiago, Chile. Uh, and as Neil was telling me, actually, there's a huge mountain biking infrastructure there, just way more than I ever yeah, realised. Yeah, he said it yeah. was staggering. He was going on, walking down one of the streets there when he went out for the, the, basically the event he did with Blake. And they were getting more attention working for GMBN than some of the pro riders are, that well, were in town, it's, which is just crazy. I, when I was, Nigel, was Nigel, who runs the chain reaction team, was telling me that it was almost their worried for Sam Hill's safety. Well, when they did, he did worse in South America. On. They couldn't, he couldn't leave the house. Wow. He was almost under lock and key the whole week. <laughs> I think we need to go. That's yeah, yeah. But, uh, all right, so we've got the outside of the house here looking good. Or a bit of a shoe oh, storage. Nice, nice. That's a nicely adapted piece of, I don't know what. Lack um, of Crocs, which has me concerned, if I'm honest so, with you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a 52-year-old orthopedic surgeon. So bike stand, tools are my hobby, and my 17-year-old's son's hobby. I'm very proud of my cave. Uh, right now, here we go, starting to get into nice. good stuff. So nice roll cab down the door yeah. there. 
Got a vice going on there with a. Uh, this one got some sort of holster for his drill. Ooh, drilled into the counter. Cowboy set. Kind of cool. Oh, here oh, we there go. We go. Nice. Sick. Cowboy setting. We're having that one. <laughs> yeah, into that. Nice. So he's got bikes hanging on the wall down the back. Got a park tool blue kicking about. Yeah. All important ceiling fan. I guess you probably need it. And that neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah. Great for whittling down heads, um, steerer tubes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Just raise them high. More holsters going on here. Oh my word! It's like out of the wild, wild west. Just gunslinging. I, t- I tell you what, even Martin would be proud of the fact that you've got your 90 degree sort of angling with all your tools. Yeah, it's that's good. There's no, there's no me, odd yeah. angle, so you'll be on a yeah, equal I'm axis there. there. Yeah, looking good. Nice. Um, the lake inside. Oh, what is exactly that, is that? Is that, is that, is that a, artwork? Is that a potential <laughs> lake inside? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but quite I think, like I think that's it. quite a diplomatic way of describing some flooding. <laughs> I, I tell you what, what, the lake inside. You no, know, it's the works then, bolted to the floor. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Nice, yes, it's sturdy. Yeah, that's nice. Unless it's poking out of the lake and there's actually a stand under there, <laughs> of course. Uh, helmet storage and, uh, of course, a little cowboy hat type thing on the wall there. Looking good. And you've even got a shower attachment to clean oh, stuff. Oh, nice. Sick. Kind of like a homemade parts washer, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got oh, some perfect. sort of muck off down in there. And you've got a generator okay. too. It's got a yeah. whole lot. Perfect. Compressor even, yep. Yeah. And then you've got your various stickers, race number plate up on the top board there. Little parts, trays, dotted around everywhere. Looking good, nice yeah, setup. No, pretty solid. Crammed in with stuff there. Is that a Kinevo over the back? I think it is. It looks like Neil's one, the same colour. Well, Neil's one's covered his scratches, so I'm sure yours is looking <laughs> and sounding a bit better than his. Right, next up is from Fartine in uh, Norway. Nice. Um, loving the show and follow the videos whenever I can. Your enthusiasm and passion for the sport and technology is inspirational. Wow, thank you very much. I uh, remember you well from your MBUK days. Yeah, there's a few of those, I think it's 13 and a half years worth. So quite a lot of days. <laughs> Never worked out how many days it was, but, or how many words I wrote, actually. Yeah. I might do that at some point on a rainy Probably day. a similar number, right? <laughs> yeah, I reckon. <laughs> uh, so this is cool. So he's got like a recycled kitchen worktop, which is turned, basically I've got kind of a similar thing yeah, in my bike right. shop. Um, I'm loving that homemade like, bike stand on the bench there. That's quite a cool idea. It looks like you can swivel it around. It'd be yeah. really good for forks, actually. Yeah. If I had to knock them horizontally. Yeah, absolutely. Better than putting them in vice. That's for sure. A little tiny little vice, that. Eh? A little three inch, four inch one. What those stands are really good for is when you are servicing a new set of forks and you're just changing the settings and yep. you don't have to redo the lowers. You can get everything out horizontal and very carefully ah. <laughs> put them all back together. That's a good little top tip, that. I think we might have to turn that one into a video at some point. <laughs> A couple of different bikes, you've got your Stumpy in the stand, and you've got your Orange. Uh, I don't know if that's an Evo or something, can't quite see from here, but looking very nice. It definitely looks like you need to spend some time in the yeah. hand shortening your hoses uh, down there. Spaghetti Junction. That's for sure, yeah, Snake's Wedding up front. <laughs> but, yeah. but, uh, hey, workshop looks great there, yeah, one thing. Tool yeah. board looks decent, and another compressor there. All good, right, so next one's from Rebecca in Wisconsin. So. This one looks pretty heavy duty, got a massive prop holding up the ceiling. I hope that's uh, not too structural in there, don't want to knock that over. <laughs> the little park mobile stand, these are actually really useful. Handy, actually, yeah. I take one of those camping all the time as well. Just oh, nice. Really, yeah, quite handy for... Bit, you're a bit tall for lying on that, aren't you? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good selection of bikes, all the fat bikes in the world. And that looks like a home jigged stand yeah that's good nice it's a bit that's more solid. compact than blake's last effort so perhaps blake needs to make another video with your homemade bike rack <laughs> like this one but uh, looking good awesome well there we go we're out of the bike cave this week uh, please continue to send them in we love seeing them we love having a little jib at them as well okay now it's time for rewind and it appears that i'm uh, the current retro geek here and and henry's leaving this one to me this week um, so Rewind, of course, is where we look at old retro mountain bike stuff. Uh, anything from the 90s, preferably, or uh, less than 2005, we can make do with. Uh, anything retro counts. Could be some old sunglasses, could be a picture of a relative racing a bike, or it could be a bike that you've acquired. Usual rules apply. Take some photos of this stuff or video footage on your phone and send it into the address that's right on the screen right there. Now, first up this week, it's quite cool. So last week's show, I went over to visit Ibis Cycles and Scott Nickel. Now, before Ibis Cycles, Scott was also doing some work on another brand of bikes. Now, as you can see on screen here, this is one of them. It's a Navara Ponderosa. Uh, Ponderosa is named after the Sequoia National Park in California. Uh, this one's from 1987. You can see Scott Nickel's name on the top tube there. So it's a steel frame, uses lugs on there, as you can just about see in the background of the shot. 
Now, interestingly, this has been one of the very early mounts of wires. This has actually got a U-brake set up on it. You see it's got that black spiky thing. That's a Shimano shark's tooth. So they used to do the shark fin that went on the top of the chain stay, and bikes used to suffer in chain suck, and the whole point was it basically would catch the chain and stop it from getting sucked in between the tire and the chain stay. Now, they also used to have problems with U-brakes because of the daft position they were in, where basically the bottom of the chain would get caught in the, in the brake mechanism on flappy basically on um, rough descents. So they had this little bit of plastic that used to just fashion on there. Um, looked pretty terrible, but they seemed to do the trick, all right? Um, massive biopaste chain rings on there. I think they were probably from the year that used to give everyone knee ache and they stopped making them after that. Um, but the frame, just the layout of it, looks pretty classic, really. It's quite a nice looking bike. Nice to see it all in one piece there. Got the Gary Fisher saddle on the back, the Tange logo on the forks there. So the frame's obviously made from Tange, maybe Prestige, something like that. Um, lovely to see, really nice looking old retro bike that. Now this next one's pretty cool, so uh, Lightspeed are well known for making titanium frames, so this one's from Zach, um, and basically he raced his bike at his first year of high school in 2014, so he basically acquired the bike and rebuilt it with some modern componentry. So the layout of the frame is it's got an alloy back end, titanium front end on there, but the back end is one of the original style amp style designs. So it's a four bar pivot. The original one's got the horse link on the chain stay and a McPherson strut with the shock basically driven straight from the seat stay there. Quite a classic looking bike. Uh, I think that's for 1998 because the original one of these actually was a hardtail frame and the higher up model in the frame actually had this frame previously. But it's nice to see it still being used because that rear end will still work just as well. It's basically like a, an FSR that you see on specialized bikes. Of course, it's been uh, it's been improved over the years and sorted out. But it actually looks a bit like a slalom bike there, Yeah, I think. Um, and it's quite cool to see some shots of uh, Zach racing it as well, which is good. Out on a cross-country race there. Yeah, it looks like he maybe got five aside later on in the afternoon. He's kind of got some fairly long <laughs> socks on. Or well, maybe they're shin pads. We maybe know. they're shin pads, who knows? Maybe he had come from a soccer match, who knows? You, you'll never <laughs> know. But um, either way, lovely to see that that bike's still being ridden. And they always say the tyre frame is one for life because they, they technically should last forever, uh, provided you get your geometry right in the first place. And that still looks pretty good. Um, really good to see that. So thanks for sending that one in, Jack, uh, Zach, even. Um, and see you next week. Okay, now it's time for top mods, and seeing as we have uh, an ex World Cup mechanic in the house, I thought I'd just slide this over to you, Henry, and you can right. uh, you can take top mods from here. Yeah, I haven't seen any of these before, so I'm gonna be we're gonna be on a journey together of discovery. So it's from <laughs> Carlos in Mexico, and he's got a giant Anthem 29, and we're just gonna be flicking through. So he's got some nice actually Junior uh, Crown Race press there, which is pretty nice. Something going on with a damper. Cool, nice. So that's actually basically, what he's done is he's modified the shim stack to give either more or less compression than factory tune. This is, it can be a bit of a slippery slope. Sometimes they put that shim stack in there for a particular reason, and especially with these expandable dampers, they can um, go bye-bye. Go but um, it definitely is a pretty cool, pretty cool to do it yourself, especially if you're comfortable with that and you can get you know exactly what you want, but fair play to him. So you can actually see all the internals of his fork here laid bare. Now, in that kind of center left, you can see the set of discs there, it's actually the shims, and that'd be the order they go in. So often, they'll go small up into larger diameter and then back down to small, that's your compression tune. Now, those shims are actually not only different widths, but also different um, weights, <laughs> thicknesses, <laughs> which basically affects how much they can flex. Now, it's actually, there is a formula to work out your shims, but it's something often suspension manufacturers will keep very close to their chest and it's quite hard to get hold of that because they don't want to give all their secrets away. And if you, imagine if you put too much compression too soon and let, not letting the oil bypass around them, which is what they do, the more they flex, the, the easier it is for that oil flow to go past. Well, you can pretty much blow up your damper because it expands too quickly and it bangs and it all goes into the lower and that's when you get no, no damping whatsoever. It used to happen on the charger ones sometimes had a slightly kind of too much going on a couple of big compressions and you could blow them up sounds like a warranty case to me it would be a warranty yeah but if you've been in there giving it some elbow grease it probably will be less likely to be <laughs> accepted so I would bow means I'm not saying don't do it but definitely do your homework before but this part of the show isn't just for people going into the you know beast in the, of the suspension forks and seeing what's going on it's also for People doing the you know the, the smaller jobs, the more finicky jobs, and um, yeah, send them in. Don't be shy. 
And now it's time for tech of the week. And this week we've got a brand new tool from Park. It's the HBT slash one. So this is a hydraulic barb tool. Uh, essentially for trimming down your hydraulic hoses here and inserting a barb into it. Um, I guess the thing that's really cool about this is that you can do this while the cables hoses are still on your bike. Um, just for example, if you've got a set of Shimano brakes, you have those little yellow blocks. So you can basically hold the cable or the hose still in a vise. This actually does this for you. I think yeah. it's quite a cool tool. I actually didn't realise it wasn't a tin opener. I was about 20 minutes with a bloody can <laughs> of peaches this morning. Now, I love tools that do one job very well, but don't do any other job. Yeah. I like that. You that know, is all really you cool. could do with this, literally. Yeah, totally. And what you can do, although this is absolutely wonderful, if you want to make something similar at home, you can get a cheap set of more grips, get two of those bleed blocks and block bond them to it, That's and you never use it for anything other than holding cable lines. And it's really good when you're actually getting your routing right and you can twist it in the brake and get it all perfect. I think I can feel uh, Henry's top tool hacks video coming on. Yeah, bloody, just you just let me add him. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see that video, let us know in the comments below and I will make him make that video. Yeah. <laughs> There we go, there's another weekly GMBN tech show in the bag. For a couple more great videos, uh, I'm going to throw you to Jones's A to Z over on EMBN. He went to Riva del Garda show. You've got to watch this, if nothing else, for the work stand that's in there. That thing is primo. And earlier this week, Neil was, poor bugger, was tasked with trying to get some sense out of me on the GMBN podcast. <laughs> Check it out down here. It was a real good chat. We kind of covered a lot of the bases of the inner workings of the World Cups, etc. That's super in depth, yeah. I've actually haven't listened to that myself. I've oh, listened yeah. to it as well. Nice. Well, as always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up if you love the show and love what you're doing. Uh, if you've got any suggestions, let us know in those comments below and we shall make it or address it. Uh, as always, uh, don't forget to share and subscribe.